Hey guys, this is Andy Chatfield from PTC Optics. I'm here today to show you how to upgrade the firmware of your 20X SDI camera, um, the G1 camera. If you're unsure if you have a G1 or a G2, look on the bottom of the camera. The G2 will say G2 in the model number. The G1 will not. It won't say G1, it won't say G2. It'll just say PTC Optics 20X USB. So if you have a G1, this is for the 20X SDI G1 camera. So the first thing I'm going to do is go into this sock folder and I'm going to run the upgrade program. This is the program that will let you find every PTZ Optics camera on your network. I am going to, I know I already have my 20X SDI set to 111.87. So I'm going to go here and the first thing I'm going to do is back it up. This is just to save some specific information for one of the chips in the camera. Um, it, it does not save all your camera settings. All of that stuff will be wiped out once you do the firmware upgrade, the IP address, any settings you make in the on-screen display will all be set back to default. So at this point, I am now going to upgrade. I do want to mention this process takes about five to ten minutes long. Um, if the camera gets turned off at any point in time during that process, if you lose internet connectivity or network connectivity, if if Windows goes through an update and, and closes out, it can cause the, the camera to get bricked and be not usable. So make sure that nothing is going to interrupt this process for the next 10 minutes or so, and you should be good to go. So we're going to go up here to the type, and we're going to choose MTD. And I'm going to go to open. I'm in my 20X SDI G1 folder, so I'm going to use this disk image file. And I'm going to hit upgrade. This should um, this should basically take uh, it should shoot up to about eighty five percent, and it'll take about five minutes to complete. After that, it's going to reboot twice in this process. Um, once it reboots the second time, it will be close to finishing up. Once it says upgrade success, you should be fine to carry on to the next step of the process here, which will be restoring the backup. But that's it. We should now just sit and wait, make sure the camera reboots twice, and we should be good to go. My camera just rebooted for the first time, so we should be moving quite all just along here. My camera just rebooted for the second time, so the process should be finishing up here. And as I mentioned, once this is complete, it will wipe your firmware or your IP address once you complete the firmware process. So I'm going to search, and it should be the default IP address. 
I'm going to go through and set that back to what I had it set to, which is 11.87, 1.1. Set. Your camera will reboot after this. Once it is finished rebooting, you should be able to find it again. There it is. If you keep refreshing and you can't find it, reboot your camera, and then you should be able to find it. That happens sometimes. I'm going to go to the backup next, and I'm going to restore the backup that I made in the beginning. Again, your camera will reboot during this process. And once your camera comes back, you should be completely good to go. Your camera should be 100% upgraded to the most recent firmware, and um, you should have no problems getting an IP feed. So I'm back. I am just going to bring up VLC to test it. And there is my IP feed. So I hope this video has been helpful, guys. If you have any issues with your firmware process, please get a hold of us at ptzoptics.com, and I will see you guys next time. Bye now.